in flat panel models we discussed the tft screen the lcd screen uh, and uh, i showed a couple of videos which showed you how they work then we have glass plasma and uh, plasma screens and then we have touch screen monitors now we have those uh, touch screens now touch screens what technology they are working on okay fine so we discussed lcd we discussed a little about led and after led uh, someone said oled and plasma okay dlp as well tft monitors we did plasma oled fine So what this OLED is? Organic, organic light emitting diodes. So what is the difference between normal LED and, uh, yep, that is good. So the first is uh, obviously your basic uh, computing uh, that we are going for. This is just uh, like, uh, uh, this is just uh, brushing up for you since uh, you know all these things. Then the next is your networks, then web design, web development. Uh, Uh, so fine, uh, this is what you have been shared. Uh, okay, fine. So uh, like uh, OLED stands for organic LEDs. Now what is the difference between LED and OLED and how it works? Now look, uh, what happened? Yeah, the difference or the main difference between LED and OLED is like LED is creating uh, the light, which is making changes to the screen that we are having. Like you are not viewing the LED light; you are viewing the polarized screen. Which is uh, like, uh, let me LED screen working principle in case we go for image. So, LED screen working principle, not so fine. Yeah, we can see this image. Maybe this LED monitor. Okay. This is again LCD. Mm. 
so uh, like uh, again uh, so for led what happens is your the led is that we put in the layer in the like uh, first layer that is getting the power we are simply eliminating those leds and those leds are coming to our polarized screens and they that light is making the changes whereas in case we talk about oled oled is not making any changes like that oled itself is what we are viewing in oled we don't have that is yeah, like a my screen that is making the changes in case uh, yeah this is what you can see let me open this image uh, open image that can zoom up so fine so uh, what i can do is copy um, copy image and share with you all yep that is what i wanted to say so in case you see this image you will find that what happens with a uh, a small image or uh, that doesn't have a very good uh, uh so what happens in uh, yeah like uh, lcd led uh, you have this uh, led uh, frame which uh, is fitted with all those leds and it is creating the light which is making changes to my uh, screen uh, like we have this uh, a uh, screen which can be polarized depending upon the current or the power yeah, or the light so this is what happens now here what happens is these leds are generating those kind of, yeah like uh, uh yeah like uh, those leds are being in, illuminated like they are getting, they are creating the lights and we are seeing exactly that light i believe that was a little clear to everyone uh now instead of uh, like a uh, making any changes to the substrate screen we are simply viewing the light the, yeah, the uh, lights that are being produced by oled so that is the difference so that is about my uh, oled now i don't know if that was clear for everyone in case anyone uh, found uh, like a uh, confusion just let me know now coming to plasma i believe uh, you guys have a basic understanding what plasma is uh, in case who don't know let me tell you plasma is uh, like a plasma can be said to be a state where we have the gases which are having high charges uh, like uh, they are electrically charged that might be positive charge or negative charge based upon the need so in uh, like uh, yeah many of the times you might hear that uh, uh, about plasma so plasma is nothing other than charged gases uh, and that gases might not only be the gases that we have in our air that might be even any element like even uh, uh, we can have iron which has been uh, evaporated and which has been made into a uh, gas and uh, we have those electrons which are highly charged or those uh, like uh, those molecules or atoms that are heavily charged they can uh, they bring in a lot of charge 
Now, what happens is these charged gases that we have in our plasma streams, they eliminate the polarized screen that we are having at the front level. So, like uh, you can see, we have uh, we talked about those polarizers or polarized screens. So, these gases that we are getting, they are uh, making changes to this polarizer or the polarized screen, and that is creating the image that we are trying to uh, build in. So, these are the different kinds of monitors that we might have. Uh, TFT, we talked about. Plasma, we talked about. Do we have anything more? Fine. We have DLP, LED, we have, then we have the one and say, okay. So next we can have uh, DLP monitors. Now, what DLP would mean? That is what we have in our syllabus, so we need to go for it. So DLP would uh, probably stand for data loss protection. Uh, I believe DLP was uh, the monitor that we developed right before LCD that was into flat tube, uh, like a, a flat screen. Uh, um, basically, starting with flat screen, uh, later we uh, came up with more uh, better technologies. Uh, that was you think, uh, that um, was into uh, curved surfaces as well. So we can have uh, different types. Now DLP basically uh, would be working on uh, like any of these technologies might involve any of these technologies, but they would also be involved in some kind of uh, like a loss limitation owing to some software algorithms. So in case we talk about DLP stream, Working principle. Working principle. So so they would be using uh, uh, those uh, protection uh, algorithms. They might involve any kind of uh, any kind of image creation or uh, projection or uh, scene, but they would be using some kind of uh, algorithms. Now you can see uh, we can have LC, we can have uh, DLP in LCD or any other kind. So that is nothing but uh, you are adding some algorithms to increase. Uh, yeah, like decrease the losses that might occur through my transmission. So that would be my DLP, nothing uh, more than that. I believe. Digital light processing. So that might be using LCD technology or in it came up with better technologies as well, but uh, it is only about uh, like uh, decreasing the losses. Fine, so that is what we have, then we can have touch screens. Touch screens. 
now touch screens might uh, use uh, like uh, led or lcd uh, uh, uh yeah like uh, technology uh, so they might use uh, any of the technologies but they would be using another thing that is uh, can anyone uh, like does anyone has any idea of touch screen it can have lcd led oled anyone but there is something that has been uh, added so what do you think uh, is there in touch screen like what we understood that uh, we are creating some kind of uh, like uh, we are uh, converting the signals into either current or light and we are putting that light or current on our polarized screen in most of the cases except for oled where we are generating uh, direct images from the illumination of these oleds rest what they are doing is the, uh, for current we are uh, like uh, adding current to this uh, polarized screen and it is creating the images then uh, for others what we are doing is we are uh, like uh, 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 for uh, for yeah like uh, others what we are doing is we are creating some kind of light and that light is being uh, incident on this polarized screen and it is generating those uh, images now when it comes to touch screens they are using any of these technologies except for crt and what we are having is the screen is again the screen has some kind of mechanism that responds to the motion on the screen and it generates some kind of electricity or current and that current match like uh, that current is being uh, used for my sensing like uh, they have sensors on uh, the screen and that sensor is reading the movement or the touch or the tip of my fingers or any other device that we are putting so i am not sure if uh, that was uh, like uh, you guys were able to understand uh in case you have any questions you might ask i tried myself might be i was not clear so let me know we can have uh, implement different technologies the first technology would be the resistive technology uh, or res resistive touch screens now what happens uh, in resistive technology is uh, what i say um, like uh, again in case uh, we are understanding now above this polarizer we have a glass now when we are like uh, this when we are applying any uh, movement or any force on the glass there is a like uh, so this glass 
has uh, like a yeah, like a, this glass and this polarized screen there is a difference and that is being filled by insulated material now when you put in something uh, yeah, like uh, you when you apply force those insulation uh, is does not remain there for that much of time now if i applied some force the insulation which is there between the glass and this resistive uh, like uh, this uh, screen that is not there uh, because of the force and it is able to capture the movements on the glass so that would be my resistive the next would be my capacitive so i believe uh, you guys have a basic understanding about capacitance is now what happens is again we have a glass layer over it now that glass uh, has been uh, like a uh, uh, has capacitive uh, cap yeah, like uh, capacitive materials which has uh, uh, which has uh, mm -hmm. uh gap uh, insulation and conduction conduction properties on only this side which is right near the screen so in case i draw so we have all these layers above this we have another layer that is uh, the glass which is uh, having touch properties now uh, let this move okay so above the polarized uh yep yeah, yeah, polarized screen we have a glass which is having that capacity now for a uh, resistive what we are doing is we are providing a resistive layer and now that resistive layer due to uh, when we apply in force that resistive property is does not remain there the next is my capacitive property now in with capacitive property you have a capacitance uh, kind of technology implemented on this layer now what happens is one side that is right near my uh, that is on this side does not yeah like a uh, it doesn't have conduction properties on this side now when you apply the pressure force this will connect to my polarized screen and that polarized screen will capture using the sensors the movement then you can have infrared now in case we are having infrared then this screen uh, doesn't make any, a lot of difference uh, this polarized screen is having uh, uh, those photo detectors and that photo detectors are capturing the movement of the infrared rays that we might be having then uh, what are the other technology that we are talking about we can have three or four resistive touch surface wave touch capacitive touch
fine. Uh, then surface wave, uh, like uh, it is using uh, some kind of ultrasonic waves, and uh, those ultrasonic waves are being fed by the sensors that we have implemented. So these can be the various technologies used, uh, which we might be using for our monitors or for my screens. Huh. And now in case we talk about uh, the different uh, display, so we can have monochromatic. That is, uh, I believe you might have heard the term. Uh, monochrome. What would be the others? We might have gray scale. What would be the other? There would be ne nothing other than color. Uh, uh, I believe you guys understand chrome uh, is somewhat related to color. So monochrome is one single color. Uh, one single color that is only black and white. Uh, the next would be my gray scale, which is again very similar to my black and white screen, but uh, there is a difference that uh, there would be gray shades over it. Uh, like uh, yeah, it won't be completely black and white. It would be having a little of gray uh, colors, like uh, grayish. Or uh, let us see, gray scale image so this is not completely black and white uh it is uh, like something in between no uh not exactly com not completely white but it has various shades in case we talk about white black and white it can be either only black and white black and white image. Now, I believe uh, you can notice the difference that just try to notice the difference of uh, gray scale versus black and white. images in the if we can see together yeah. here you go i don't know if uh, that is very clear for everyone uh, but let me here yeah. for browser i don't know what he wants to say uh, So this uh, image will uh, like uh, would be very uh, clear for you. That would uh, make you understand much better. And uh, this image would make you understand even better. 
so even pixel level of understanding would be there using this image. So just uh, like uh, have a look at it and that will help you understand better. Yep, that would be the difference. And the final uh, we talked about would be my color uh, color screens, which uh, would be representing each and every color as it is. So these are the three different kinds of um, screens that we can have monitors that we can have. We can have graphics card next. Now, any questions, anyone? So you seem to be with. Did you guys find these uh, pictures, these images? ATM screens. Okay. Uh, Saurabh says uh, plasma. Fine. Uh, so, uh, Saurabh, plasma, uh, we are talking a lot about plasma as uh, like uh, in the last few years. So, what do you understand by plasma? Plasma is something uh, that is some kind of liquid that can convert uh, easily to other forms. Uh, like a Uh, or better to say, like this is exactly neither like not liquid and not gas. Something is in between, and it mostly is about charges, ions, protons, electrons. So it is about charges. So what happens is Now uh, here you can see we have a dielectric layer. This dielectric letter layer was almost everywhere. Now here you can see we have a uh, plasma cells. Plasma cells are nothing, which we need here, except for we have some uh, element or atoms which are highly charged. Abhi, what happens is uh, dielectric layer provides 
charged to these materials which are there in my uh, in this layer uh, in the plasma layer and this plasma now right now it is seating it is not see it uh, doesn't remain seating anymore now once you give a lot of charge to it it turns into gases and it will make changes to my dielectric layer that will change my the polarization of my uh, polarizable or polarized screen so yaha par what we are doing is we are uh, like uh, creating plasma and uh, like uh, for uh, yeah like leds we were creating light and that light was being incident on this uh, rgb filter now uh, the layers that we have uh, that is pro producing the image similarly instead of having that light or that current we are using that gases charged gases or charged plasma to light up this rgb layer and this rgb layer will be creating a image so that is how plasma works to find great Sir, everyone is present. Uh, in a state, we went from. We are attending class via projector. Total twenty-five. Thank you, Ramya. Uh, sir, everyone is present. Thank you. Uh, no, but I'm not sure if. Uh, uh, sir, our browser. Okay. Uh, I will come to that. Three went from. Okay, eighteen from Calicut. No, twenty-five. So let. I am not very sure. I will uh, take it uh, at the end. So. Uh, Ramya, uh, don't leave before, uh, like, uh, before I tell you to go. And Vikas, now, uh, Vikas asks about Tor browser. Now, there would be something which made you think about it. What do you like? Uh, what do you know about Tor? uh now uh, again vikas what i would suggest is tor is nothing but another browser that has a uh, like a uh, a protocol for routing that helps you encrypt whatever data you are sharing so you won't be uh, like uh, tracking when you are using tor browser tracking would be a little difficult for uh, the agencies and for everyone like you won't be tracked your data would remain safe but when uh, you think about something called dark web so most of the people they don't believe there is something called the dark web that is just a myth that is some kind of uh, that that is something which has been uh, like a uh, Uh, a myth that was created uh, that is not something like huh, you can use a uh, loud like a uh, it. Uh, I'm not very sure if it has a VPN inbuilt or not, but I believe uh, uh, like uh, TikTok was banned in India and a lot of sites that are banned in India. Many people they have are accessing uh, it using Tor. tor allows you to bypass a lot of uh, security and uh, protocols uh, since it has a uh, onion protocol uh, that is what we say that is uh, into routing that masks your uh, uh, masks a lot of uh, things that you are sharing like uh, it encrypts your data completely encrypts it uh, it cannot be decrypted or uh, uh, easily number one it masks your ip very well so this is something uh uh like uh, this is something which is uh why tor is being uh like uh, taken with a, such a high so it has a lot of uh, it created a lot of hype but in case you are thinking about something called dark web on all those things so that is another myth but i believe and uh, you must be knowing that a lot of illegal activities might be taking uh, taking on the internet uh 
India. So that was even uh, going on in our society as well. Now we are uh, like arms. Uh, they are being shared. So everything is happening here also. So there is nothing called dark web that is just a hype or that is just a myth. So don't think a lot about it. Uh, in case you are very much interested in security, network security. So I would suggest you to learn network security very well and move into the field. So like uh, penetration testing is there to check uh, you know, my network, the security of my network. So try to go for that. But, uh, don't fall into those things which uh, like uh, which has not been which is not an established fact. So that is what I would say, uh, Vikas. I believe uh, you got an idea what Tor browser is. Fine. So uh, like uh, moving ahead. We have something called graphics art. Now, what do you understand by graphics art? I don't think uh, it is really that difficult. Most of you already know, and you might be using a separate graphics card in your uh, computers or laptops. So graphics card, uh, like uh, in case we talk about graphics card is nothing but it enhances the quality of your uh, display or the images that you are viewing on your uh, screen. So it uh, you might uh, add a separate graphics card to increase the, enhance the quality, nothing else. And uh, like uh, many of you might be uh, like uh, going into uh, gaming. So in gaming, you might need. But uh, for me, if you say I am working on a little of uh, images and I am processing images a bit, but uh, I don't need uh, an additional graphics card. But in case I am working on something called uh, e like. Uh, uh, yeah, like image or video processing, and I would be using Adobe Photoshop and uh, similar kind of uh, applications, Corel Draw. So then I would be uh, needing another or uh, separate or increased graphics card. So this is what you have. This is how a graphics card looks like uh, for your uh, computers. So you would be having an interface which would be put on the uh, uh, fine. So. Uh, we had that PCI slot, so the, uh, it will be put on the PCI slot. Then you have this graphical processing unit, uh, like uh, we call CPO, central processing unit. We have this graphical processing unit, and you would be having separate memory. This memory would be a little uh, better. Then you have this power cords, which would be uh, connected to, uh, like a uh, power, yeah, like uh, this would be supplied with power. Uh, and then you have those HDMI ports. Now, in case uh, you want to uh, get uh, the projection somewhere, so you can use those HDMI cards for projection. So that is uh, my graphics processing unit or graphics or graphical processing uh, card. So uh, this is uh, some theoretical part. Like uh, you can have different pores uh, that can be uh, like uh, on different uh, things. Then you have this memory that memory is solely for the purpose of image processing by the GPU. Then you have internal yeah, uh, interface that is connecting you to uh, the PCI slots. Yes, this PCI slot uh, that would creating uh, that would create a connection between this GPU and uh, the processor. Uh, then you have this heat sink fan. Okay, fine, good. Then, uh, then you have the power connectors, which would be uh, providing the power supply. Uh, so fine. And you have LCD, CRT monitors. Fine. There is a difference. Uh, again, uh, this is what we have already understood. Uh, CRT stands for cathode ray tube. LCD stands for uh, liquid crystal display. Huh. So uh, this is not something which I uh, really told you. So 
but I believe uh, there was something which I uh, was uh, there. So you have this uh, like a cathode and this anode, and L, uh, like uh, this is a vacuum uh, tube, and you are making ins yeah, like uh, making these uh, electrons incident on this plane. So that is the working principle and uh, how it works. So first of all, the screen is uh, like again yes. This is again uh, not only uh, it is also a phosphorus screen. When you bombard it with uh, electrons, it will light up. Jahan jahan par, wherever there is a bombardment, electron falls that would light up, and that is the principle. Then we have this uh, liquid crystal display, which is using some kind of liquid, uh, which when provided with electricity would crystallize that is pneumatic liquid so like again size it was really very big and uh, it was really very uh, uh, large lcd we all have seen that is very small and that is really very light fine so heavy like power consumption again that is using a lot of power and that is not only uh, like uh, using a lot of power that is also producing a lot of power now inside these uh, uh, cathode ray tubes, we are producing uh, current, yeah, like uh, around 11 and 33 kilowatt, depending upon the brand and the make. Uh, consumes low power, uh, consumes high power, fine. Huh. Uh, like uh, image flickering is much more in CRTs as compared to the LCDs. Uh, cathode ray tube, in the beginning, we only had black, uh, like uh, uh, black and white, then we moved into more. LCD was mostly into colors. Uh, image retention uh, cannot be there since again uh, you bombarded the electrons. Electrons comes falls in it. Image is created. Now once the electrons stop, the image is gone. But in case we are uh, talking about LCDs, what happens is once you uh, put in electricity and my crystals. They crystal like uh, in my liquid crystallizes, so it will remain like that till another current is put on it. So I believe that was a little clearer to you all. Now it is something like RAM. You uh, like so you put in some data in the RAM. You are giving it constant supply of electricity. No change in electricity. It will remain as it is. But once you change uh, the current. It will change. Similarly, the uh, like uh, the crystals will remain as it is till the current has been maintained. Now, once you change the current, uh, the crystals will like uh, the liquid would crystallize into another uh, like another image. So, uh, image forming is using the electron gun. Uh, we had this. This is the my electron. Uh, yeah, like electron gun, and this would be my mm, phosphorus screen that is uh, like uh, this is putting a lot like uh, bombarding my screen with electrons uh, at a very uh, fast speed so that is the difference okay then we can have like uh, we have v, uh, vram for here types of vram different uh, rams so these are the few things that we needed to know and uh, mostly, uh, like, uh, in case we talk about uh, most of the things, they have been replaced now with a common standard. So mostly, you would be finding a common standard for all those things. Uh, you don't need to, uh, like, uh, uh, worry a lot about the different uh, things that we talked about right now. You would be finding uh, most of the things that this is a standard and you can put in. You don't need to check on what is uh, like, uh, you just need to understand what is the size of the GPU and that would be all. You don't need to uh, like bother a lot about most of the things. Uh, so that is what uh, we have. Uh, uh, from your screens. Now, any questions, please let me know as we can move on to our 
much interesting topic i believe that would be trouble shooting and in case no one has any question so let us uh, move ahead and let us understand the different uh, things that might happen to my computer uh, those which we can say to be uh, basic troubleshooting so let us talk about the first problem that we might be uh, facing uh, according to uh, like our manual that is the computer doesn't boot up now what do you think can be the problems and uh, now let us think um, most of you are into computing for quite some time so most of you know a lot so just let me know ideas now and like uh, again mm, a, a manual or a person can think of a few things but combined we can think a lot of options a lot of things the computer doesn't uh, turn on the reason might be the supply power supply is not correct uh you don't have the power or the connections are not correct so nothing else can be the reason your computer is not booting up nothing is happening the problem is the with the power supply fine so you need to check on with the power supply now that happens at times like uh, you are putting up but uh, your charger is not charging your laptop so you're like uh, fuming but you don't see that uh, the port from where you are giving it the power that doesn't have the power so that can be one of the reasons but in case your computer turns on but it still it does not work now from here comes uh, another problem which might not be uh, like a uh, very uh, which might not seem to be very uh, like uh, which might happen so like a um, these things we have discussed but let us discuss it once again the problem is uh, you are getting power your computer is trying to turn on but you are still not uh, like unable to boot it up completely the problem might be with the post we talked about post i believe uh, most of you would be able to recall the power on self test now anyone uh, can recall it or should i go for it again the power on self test that uh, tells you uh, a lot of things using the beeps i uh, believe uh, we talked about the beeps uh, i don't know when uh, but we talked about the beeps hardware hardware yes uh, 
what about the beeps? Yes, we talked about. Uh, Find no issues. We can talk about it. It's so fine. Not a problem. So, uh, like, uh, yeah, the problem is with my post, and it will give me those beeps. So, what would be the uh, beeps? Um, we talked about. One small beep, uh, one short beep, some long beeps. So we talked about a lot of things. Uh, does anyone uh, remember anything? Hi, no problem. Like in case there is one single short beep. Uh, what would that mean? One short beep in case it is. The problem is with the RAM. Take it out, clean it. And then put it back again. Uh, then we can have uh, two short beeps. This two short beeps uh, won't um, like uh, won't be a very big trouble, uh, since after these two short beeps, you might find uh, your computer beeping, uh, booting up. But uh, you need to uh, check on with the motherboard uh, in case of any circuit failures or any circuit trouble. So that might happen. Uh, so mostly two short beeps would be fine. Now, again, you find three short beeps. So that is again the problem with my RAM. Your computer does not even uh, like uh, give a, like uh, does does not uh, respond means like uh, nothing happens and you get four uh, yeah four shot or five shot uh, like a multiple four to five short beeps. Then the problem is certainly uh uh. With the complete process, that is a process failure, uh, you need to check in with uh, your hardware. So that is what you need to do. Uh, then in case we talk about uh, that would be all, all the case. That would be most. In case you are getting one long. Plus couple of short beeps. The problem is with the graphics, might be uh, with the screen as well. So uh, the problem is graphical uh, graphics related. So you need to check on in case any graphic card is installed. You need to check that. So what else have they produced? Ports okay, no beep, and the system turns on. Oh, fine, that is okay. No beep, the power is uh, okay. No beep is there, no, there is no power. Steady short beeps, voltage might be wrong. Fine, steady long beeps, power supply has gone. Long continuous beeps, that is, RAM is problematic. And in case it is one short and uh, one long and short beeps. There is a problem with the video or the graphics. And uh, like uh, one short beep, that is again RAM. Three short beeps, that is uh, RAM. 
and multi even long beeps more than one long beeps that is also ram so these are the different uh, uh cases that you might find uh, the different beep during the post that is what you need to check on uh, so one long and two yeah, like a multiple shot that is uh, the problem with your graphics now the next problem we might face is my freezing screen so what can be the problem your computer screen freezes uh freezing means nothing is responding you are trying to move the cursor the cursor is not uh, working you are trying uh, arrow buttons they are not working the problem is that you have loaded a lot of things on the ram um is like uh, ram is being used by a lot of programs and uh, it is not uh, getting free so what you need to do is close a few of the programs that you have started uh try to free your ram that probably is going to help uh now uh that can be the the reason uh and in case nothing works uh even uh if you are unable to close any of the programs you can restart your computer using uh the power button that is uh something which could help uh so there can be i believe uh no other reason for a screen freezing since you have already beat it booted up and uh applications are not responding so that can be the reason now that would be followed by your computer has insufficient memory uh insufficient memory or insufficient this that means uh like uh, the problem is with uh your ram uh your ram is really very low you need to increase your ram or if you cannot increase your ram at the particular moment so you need to run as little as less programs as possible so this is what you can do now you can have cmos error now let me show you cmos error yep uh this can be uh this can happen uh now sometimes uh you boot up in your computer and uh you might get something like this uh your bias uh fails to load so that can be error due to uh, your cmos now cmos what it does is it uh, provides power to my bias for system information and date and time so any problem with the bias would be uh, might be caused by my cmos so you might need to check cmos checksum and cmos date and time in case these two things you find bad or not set it means the problem is with your cmos battery you need to replace it and uh, like uh, fill uh, fit in the date and time as it is or uh, in case you are working on an internet connectivity so uh, the date and time would be set up automatically so that is about your cmos error uh huh. so in case we talk about uh, os error operating system error so what could be the possible problems or uh, what can be the uh, like uh, uh, possible reasons so the first can be the bias the bias is unable to find the 
boot device uh the boot device uh is not being found so in that case what you can do is uh bias fails to find boot device so what you can do is restart and try booting your computer using uh another boot device might be a pen drive a uh, bootable pen drive or a bootable cd disk or anything like that so that is going to help uh, you boot your computer uh so that is uh, that can be one uh another reason can be bias needs to be either defaulted or updated uh most of the cases you cannot update uh, your bias when it is shut down so what you need to do is uh, move into uh, like a while uh, booting up uh, in case it moves you into the bias screen restore defaults and then boot your computer now restoring defaults uh, might be uh, helpful so that can be the second option uh, uh again uh ha huh. the third option might be uh the hard disk is not working in that case you would need to change your hard disk and uh, like uh, first boot your computer using a boot device that can be a pen drive or a cd bootable and then uh, like uh, have this hard disk installed and create those partitions and install the operating system in the uh, hard disk drive so that is uh, another option that you can go for now finally you have this blue screen of death which we have already talked about the only problem with this uh, blue screen of death is the ram you have uh, lost your ram uh so the couple of reasons that might be is uh might be the connections are not good in that case break it out clean it hope it works uh in case it works try to boot in the safe mode and uh like uh, try to go uh, move into the boot records and figure out things uh if that works fine and good and fine yeah good else change the ram no other options and nothing else can be done uh in case uh it somehow you try to restart a couple of times and it allows you to boot uh be it into the safe mode or any other mode in that case you might try a system restore restore to a previous time when your computer was working good so that can be another reason like uh, anything you installed or any changes you made to your computer so the first thing that we did was we defaulted uh, bias uh, now any new changes that you made might be affecting your boot process so remove all the things and try to boot it uh, boot your computer in a previous state where it was working fine so these can be the few uh, things that you can do i believe uh, we are not missing on any of the points uh some your computer freezes so you are running short of uh, ram insufficient memory then ram cmos error remove the cmos and uh, yep uh, operating system is missing hard disk oh we talked about it right operating system or uh, is missing or uh boot is uh, like fine so uh, yeah it takes you to uh, that screen 
the bias has been defaulted to screen of death. Uh, now, let me tell you, uh, I haven't heard about uh, this BSOD any uh, like uh, for the last uh, six years. I have not heard about it. Uh, like uh, it was a problem that we faced till we had this Windows XP. Uh, even in Windows 7, I didn't uh, figure out in case anyone faced this problem. So like uh, that is something you need to know that you won't be, be finding that problem anymore. So there are other things that they are telling you to do is uh, like uh, try to restart your computer, use the internet to check out uh, the problems, restart the software. So these are the few things that they would be saying. So you might check it out. Uh, any changes that you have made, try to remove all those changes and that will help. Uninstall the software, then reinstall it that you can do that. Look for software patches. Now, I don't know if you guys are very much aware of software patches. So in case you know, just let me know. In case you don't know, uh, then also please let me know. Now, those of you who are not very much uh, clear about uh, software patches, is uh, now, uh, you guys uh, must have heard about uh, Windows update. Now, what happens is uh, you are uh, like, uh, let me show you the update history. Here you can see uh, that is like on, on a regular basis, but here you would be seeing. You can see we got a new update on 2nd of uh, September. Then after 10 or 12 days, we got another update. Fine, that is good. Now then again, we got another update within four days. So that was a change uh, that was done. So normally what happens is uh, you must have heard about uh, many applications getting a new update within two days of its launch. The problem is when they were tested on uh, in real time, there were some problems. And to fix those problems, they released a patch. Uh, that patch would be your software update. So any problems, any bugs. Uh, you guys understand bug? Anyone? Now the best example of bug can be this. You can see I am not getting that. Uh -huh. This is, I believe, a bug. Now that is not a problem, but that is something which, when it comes up, no one, no one knows. Kab aata hai, kaise jata, no one knows. Now that is certainly a bug, and I have reported this to Microsoft Teams again and again, but they haven't uh, done anything. Good. Now, sometimes you try to move it out, it won't move out. Sometimes it uh, goes on its own. Now, uh, it is much better right now. Previously, I was unable to open another. This won't happen. Now, you saw it didn't come up right now. Previously, it came. Now, when it comes, when it goes, no one knows. So, that is a bug. Now, uh, you were working on the software and uh, you were an app like a. Uh, you made something and it is behaving that is affecting your users. So that is called a bug. I believe you understood bugs. That is a part of the program and that is producing unwanted results that you don't want. So uh, those, uh, are, those bugs are simply uh, like uh, fixed and uh, now new uh, update is released and that is called software patches. So whenever you are installing uh, software, 
try to look for all the patches that are coming, the fixes or the updates that are coming. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, you can see fixes here. I can show you. Fixes, fixes. I will update. It's probably installed on me. Most of them are on. Windows 11 fixes. Mm. Oh, you can see uh, get help with Windows. There might be uh, you might get an error message while upgrading. So update Windows. Uh, So whatever it is, uh, like uh, those are my fixes and those are my patches. So you need to uh, keep your uh, uh, softwares up to date. They scan for viruses and malware at regular intervals. Now you don't need to do that since uh, these uh, uh, antiviruses, they are doing a so yeah, like a, a security check throughout. So you don't need to worry about it. Now firewall conflict in case uh, you are trying to do something which is not being allowed by the firewall rules. Might be you are trying to open your WhatsApp or Facebook in your organization where they have uh, created a rule where you cannot open WhatsApp on the you know, on their network. So you need to check for that as well. Uh, the rules that were created. Boot up in soft safe mode. Now safe mode uh, again. Uh, I have not tried uh, the safe mode for the last seven years, eight years. Now, uh, with Windows 10, even that was not like uh, that is not a problem that I ever faced. And in case you are using uh, it uh, well, but previously we had the safe mode. Now, uh, somehow, you are like uh, some of your drivers go missing or get, go corrupt, or any uh, Windows update go went corrupt. Uh, what it it does, uh, it would ask you to how do you uh, like uh, things you missing and you try to boot up and it won't boot up directly. It will ask you to uh, how do you want to uh, like uh, okay. uh, there is a lot of things missing and uh, it won't allow you to boot. So what you do is you go, you would uh, go into uh, like boot mode and there you would find a lot of options to boot using uh, another device as your boot drive or into the safe mode. Now, this safe mode will allow most of the functions to work except for networking. You won't be able to connect to the network. Uh, like uh, sometimes it happens because of uh, some kind of uh, bugs. Even Trojans might cause this uh, error where you are unable to boot up. But uh, you can log in via uh, by, yeah, like uh, bias, pressing the F8 key when you are booting up, and that will help you to boot in the safe mode. So that is something which you can do in case you are unable to uh, retrieve your device. Now, next, uh, booting up in the safe mode. Check for the, OK, fine. I already did that. Firewall conflict. Then defragment your di uh, this. This is what uh, I told you. This is something which you should do again and again. Now I had a colleague uh, back. Uh, uh, now his computer was really very slow. Though he had 8 GB of RAM, still it worked very slow. The problem was he had not uh, defragmented his uh, disk for the last four years uh, when, uh, when he bought it. So that made uh, the hard disk quite stuck up 
and it took more than 12 hours throughout the night it left it to refragment and it took more than 12 hours to defragment so uh, i would suggest you all to keep your uh, disks defragmented in case you are not having a lot of data then fine but in case you are having a lot of data you need to go for a defragmentation ha huh. then we can have io device error so the io device error might cause uh, any of your hardware to not work properly so the reasons can be incorrect connection usb port not working drivers are not working any fine like uh, you need to update your drivers uh not recognized with the drive letter external hard drive uh, is not uh, trying to access because of damage and windows yeah. is uh, yeah. sir chennai mein light chali gayi hai isliye chal nahi pa fine uh, okay fine we uh, we can work on um, work on it no issues so these are uh, like uh, not real errors which uh, you need to like uh, uh, like uh, take a lot of pressure about and uh, these uh, most of these errors you won't find anymore now uh, the basic reason that we talked about was incorrect uh, connection or there is a problem with the damage physical damage uh so these can be the basic reasons the symptoms can be uh different error codes 32 uh the best possible solution is check the connectivity in case it is put in uh, correct try to update the drivers or try to reinstall the drivers only these are the two uh, problems that you would be getting in case of uh, these are the two solutions that you can have for io errors io stands for input output unit input output uh, units uh these input output unit uh, can be anything like uh, my mouse is not working the problem is mostly with the connection uh my keyboard is not working most probably the problem is with the connection uh since uh, like uh, normally your uh, mouse it does not go bad the problem would be with the cord somewhere it is broken or somewhere it is not uh, like uh, doing good with the monitors again the same problem uh, the connections uh, most of the times there is no problem with the monitor uh, the problem is with the connection now try to uh, like uh, put uh, try to connect it very uh, correctly in case uh, you are not getting a correct connection uh, in case you uh, got it correct even if it it does not work try to update uh, the driver so these can be the few things that can be done now we are almost at the end of uh, the basic hardware that we uh, had to learn the next would be our computer networks so before moving ahead can we have any questions in case we have uh, like we can have the questions that might have been in your mind so please let me know we even uh, we won't be trying to uh, go for a lot of things but we have to be here till 4:30 that is our schedule and one more thing i cannot find uh, uh many of you have done but for chennai i can find only <coughs> a few people updating so why does she has done so few of you have done uh, but chennai most of you have not done anything oh, sir chennai ki pass chali gayi sir i understand i understand not a problem i understand so like uh, that वो तो खैर बाद की बात है लेकिन ये आप लोगों ने भी नहीं किया आ, यहाँ पर लेकिन बाकी लोगों को मैं देख रहा हूँ बहुत लोगों ने ठीक ठाक किया है और बहुतों का मैं पहले भी देख चुका तो फाइन
so any question guys or any topic we need to do again uh, except for our uh, uh, linux like i was a little fast about most of the things that uh, because i believe most of you know most of the things there was nothing new in it the basic computing uh, hardware guys any questions or anything we need to uh, go for again so i believe i should take that to be a no uh fine then uh, our next topic would be uh, networking into our computer networks uh, so let us discuss a little let us not go into the depths since uh, our colleagues from chennai they are not uh, like uh, able to uh, remain with us so that is something which we need to take care of uh so what do you understand networking is and why is it so important network what is network computer network i mean anyone is writing something chennai mein power chali gayi fine uh, no problem and guys uh, those who are still available just let me know what do you understand by computer networks Yes, please. कोई कुछ तो बोलो एनी वन इंटर कनेक्टेड ओके फाइन गुड समन से नोटिस लिंकिंग कंप्यूटर्स टूगेदर वेरी गुड इंटर कनेक्टेड कंप्यूटर डिवाइस डॉट एक्सचेंज डेटा एंड शेयर रिसोर्स विथ ईच अदर वेरी गुड सो आई डोंट नो इफ यू कॉपी डेट फ्रॉम द इंटरनेट सिंस इट सीम्स लाइक टिल हियर देयर इज अ डिफरेंट Uh, like the uh, font and of uh, design and from here it is different so you copy seem to be copied 
uh, from the internet, but that is fine. Now, copying is number one. Did you understand this? Now, here we have two terms. We have data and resources. What do you understand by data and what do you understand by resources? So uh, the, when we started, uh, we talked about A drive, B drive, two systems, A dusre se connect hota hai, tab network bolte, right, very good. Uh, two system, two or more, do ya do se zada, uh, connect hota hai, tab network bolte, okay, good. Uh, iska kaam hota hai, what we are doing is, we are sharing data and resources. So, data and resources now data is uh when we started with our computer classes uh, like uh, with our classes we talked about a drive and b drive we uh, talked about uh the things that we are having yes we talked about ki one of the drives a drive or b uh, like uh, we normally used to put the operating system to boot uh, yeah for the computer to work and when we had some program and we wanted to take it to another computer, we used to put another floppy drive, floppy disk. So that we called as B drive or depending upon uh, on where we put in. So since beginning of computing devices, we had to share our data and resources. Now data and resources can be uh, like uh, we can combine both data and resources into one common thing that is resource. Now, how? Uh, whatever I have on my uh, computer, or whatever is my connected to my computer, it can be said to be the resource. Now, if you are connected to my computer, you are getting access to everything that is there on my computer. Whatever is there uh, in the form of software, you might call them to be uh, to be data my means like uh, any file that i might ha might have or a movie i have so they you might call them to be uh, data and in case you are using the microphone that i am using uh, i have on connected to this or right now we are connected together and you can uh, like uh, I am sh huh, someone is saying something. Uh, so in a lab, in a lab might be uh, there is uh, a second. I got a call. Sorry, guys, I got a call. So suppose uh, like uh, mm, my computer is connected to a uh, 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 speaker and you some you are connected, you like uh, your computer, my computer, both are connected together. And my computer is having a, a, yeah, like a speaker and you want to play your music. That is when you are using this. Uh, speaker uh, that is my one of my resources. Now you are, I am sharing my data with you. 
might be a file, a folder, a movie, or uh, uh, an image, or anything that could be called as data. Uh, you might have heard about network printers, like a, like a, one of the computers connected to a network, yeah, to a printer, and all the computers are connected to this uh, server. And now any of those uh, computers, like a, the whole lab wants to print uh, his document, he might use that resource. So we can share, uh, like a you know, network can be used to share either data or resources, any of the uh, data or any resources. So that is what we can call as a network. Now we can have, we can connect network using, uh, like uh, mostly we have wired networks. We can have unwired networks or uh, we can use uh, other technologies like Bluetooth or uh, other uh, technologies which we would be learning in the next days, coming days. Uh, now, once we have talked about wired, unwired, we can have different types of networking, styles of networking. So uh, like uh, depending upon uh, which you might have heard, like uh, LAN, MAN, and WAN. Right. So what would that be? the area networks that we have. So uh, now you can have a lot, but normally uh, we, they talk about EAN, LAN. Now, what would you say about personal area network, uh, PAN that we call as? What would that be, personal, uh, like, uh, uh, how to connect? So, like, uh, right, yeah, don't worry, we are simply, like, uh, we would be taking these things uh, again tomorrow. Uh, we are just trying, to, like, uh, not tomorrow, might be some other day. Uh, so, but we still need to, uh, like, uh, discuss these things so that we are prepared so what do you understand by PAN? We might call it personal area network. Now, uh, this, like uh, we have added it to the different uh, types of networks that, but uh, in case you are into uh, networking, you would consider this to be a network in any case. Personal access, or better to call it as personal area. So now, what happens is, what you do is, you connect your computer to your uh, printer. Might be wired or might be wireless. So that is uh, a personal area network. You connect your mobile to your computer. Might be using Bluetooth. Might be using a wire. Whatever. So that is, uh, or you are creating a hot spot on your phone and then connecting it to your mobile, yeah, like uh, to your uh, computer. Or you are creating a hot spot. Yes, you create. You are creating a hot spot on your computer, and you are uh, connecting it to your mobile phone or another computer, and they are sharing the data so that is a personal area network now uh, using this mobile hotspot i don't know how many of you have already used it but in case my can my computer is connected to a network and i want to share that network with another device i can use this mobile hotspot i can add my phone i can add another computer or any other device so that is uh, an example of personal area network. I believe that was clear to everyone. Normally, you use this personal area network 
to share resources uh meanwhile one of the things would be resources the other would be just the user so like uh, suppose i am using my printer to connect to it so my printer is just a resource so normally uh, data sharing is uh, not as of use on this personal area network i am using my bluetooth so that is personal area network so this is uh, one the next is my local area network i believe uh, most of you have known about it so this is what i found at the first place in my uh, hostel uh, like uh, when i was in college it was just in the time when we were uh, like uh, bluetooth uh, like uh, pen drives were not very common uh, so what we did was and we were very uh, fond of watching movies uh, so what we did was we uh, created a local area network in our hostel and anyone got a new movie uh, everyone uh, was having access to it so lan uh, was uh, can was used can be used for sharing data and resources both now uh, we have uh, seen uh, this lan uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, your uh, lab has is normally i believe uh, connected using the like, uh, there is a lan connectivity over there where you can use the resources uh, from anywhere like uh, in case there is a printer uh, there so anyone on uh, that lan can be connected to can use that printer or might be in case there is a sound system available any computer can use the sound system so that is uh, the lan then we have metropolitan area network so many of you uh, many of us not you i'm sorry so many of us do not have a clear understanding of a metropolitan area network so what according to you is this metropolitan area network if someone says i won't be able to see him personal access network local area network that is my lan doria the local area network then we have this man that is metropolitan area network uh, another example of lan can be like uh, i talked uh, about the hostel that we had connected together uh, now uh, your lab is connected uh many other types you might see the whole building connected to each other that is your local area network now what according to you is uh, this man metropolitan area network so in case we talk about examples now ha huh, multiple lans connected together that is my metropolitan area network now suppose uh, like uh, i have a bank uh, or i uh, started a fast food or any kind of uh, chain in my city now in uh, like five uh, uh, branches i have now what i do is i connected all these five branches using a intranet that is uh, we have internet and intranet so i will talk about that later so what i do is all the lans of all these branches i connect together that becomes a man now suppose i haven't see uh, seen your uh, nsti but the uh, many campuses which you would visit what happens is one campus is right at uh, like a like there are 10 different buildings and each building is a kilometer apart now what they do is they create a local area network in all those buildings and they connect uh, uh, all these buildings using a uh, router might be 
uh, most probably using a router some might use other devices but router so that becomes a metropolitan area network when you are connecting multiple lands on one single network then we have this wide area network i believe most of you uh, know this wide area network Yes, that is my wide area network. So the first thing that I would uh, tell you, uh, like uh, the internet can be taken to be a, a van, a wide area network, the internet. Uh, so like most of the networks across the world are connected together. Most of the computers across the net, uh, uh, globe are connected together. So multiple LANs throughout the globe, like uh, it is not in uh, like uh, in one area, but in all the areas, all the locations, that is an example of wide area network. Uh, then in case we talk about wide area networks, now uh, many of you might have seen uh, that a few of the banks, they are using a, one type of uh, mm, operate, yeah, like a software. And everywhere you like uh, you are uh, right in trivandrum and you come to patna and you go to your bank or your atm and you try to uh, like uh, get your money so that is another why example of wide area network where uh, like even you have a uh, state bank of india in dubai in singapore i have visited so uh, like uh, you can uh, use those branches and they are all connected to one uh, single network and they are using one single software which is connected to their intranet. You won't be able to use that application on your computer. Right. It is only on those computers which are connected to that particular network. So that is uh, intranet where uh, there is a closed access. And this is an example of bank. One can be internet and those uh, multinational or national organizations which are using uh, one single application throughout and they are all connected to their intranet. So that these are the two examples or uh, like the, yes. So any questions on these, uh, like in case we need, we would be covering this again. Mm, Google, so someone has come up with something so fine. Let us see what it says. Cloud player. What is a van? Multiple lands, they are connected together. So van versus LAN, lease line. So tunneling, fine. Software defined van, SD van. Fine. Van as a service. Now that uh, moves into a more uh, complex domain. Uh, software defined defined van, so that would be um, uh, like a more uh, into the next groups of computers over large large distances. Uh, but one example can be your internet. The other can be huh. the internet itself is considered a van. So that is one, and then multinational or national uh, 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 organizations which are using uh, their own, uh, yeah, like uh, intranet. Uh, I'm not calling internet, I am calling intranet. So that can be another example. So these are the few things that I had to uh, tell you. Now, in case we have any questions, we might go take those questions in case we don't have, we might wind up for the day. Now your questions, please. 